Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host for this uh, show today. And uh, we're continuing on my series on meeting, you know, meet your uh, uh, candidates for elected office, mainly because the state and uh, local government have, you know, laws that affect people who live and work in condominiums. And, you know, and and sometimes, uh, you know, what you need to do is, uh, you know, call them and it's hard to call somebody that you don't know. So it's it's best that, you know, during this campaign season, while the candidates are out there, that you get to know them. And part of, you know, my job uh, in doing these shows, my the purpose of doing these shows is to bring you news uh, uh, about the candidates that are running and have them share with you their views uh, in the hopes that you will vote for them. And I'm really pleased to have with me today as my guest, uh, Michael uh, Ayu, and he's running for the State House in District 32. Thank you for being on my show today, Micah. Thank you for inviting me, Jane. Micah, t- tell us, so, you know, what area is, is covered by District 32? Yeah, so District 32 is a new district um, because of reapportionment this past year. And it represents uh, Mauna Loa Gardens, Mauna Loa Valley, uh, Foster Village, a portion of Aliumanu, um, a portion of Halava, and then a portion of the Pearl Ridge, the Pearl Ridge area. And you're running for the, the state house, that's the state of Hawaii House of Representatives, right? Yes, that's correct. And one interesting thing about this, you're a first time candidate. You've never run for political office. That's really yeah, that's- exciting. Yeah, that's correct. This uh, this seat was previously held by Aaron Johansson, um, who has held the seat for about 12 years and I think is really respected in the community. Um, so when I found out that he was uh, taking a step back to take care of his uh, uh, aging parents, I thought that it was a good time to, you know, get involved and, you know, try to make a difference and, and try to, you know, bring more and, and better ideas to, to state government. Well, why, you know, why don't you tell our viewers, give, give them some background. Tell us about yourself. Sure. So I, I grew up in Moanalua Gardens. Uh, I lived there my entire life. Um, and I went to Kamehameha schools. I graduated in 2007. Uh, then I went to school in Boston, uh, LaSalle University. I got an accounting degree there. And I played uh, men's volleyball, uh, Division Three NCAA men's volleyball. After that, I uh, worked on Capitol Hill for... Um, a congressman from Philadelphia, and uh, Senator Hirono when she worked in the House of Representatives. Um, after that, I came home and I went to law school at UH uh, Richardson Law School, graduated in 2016, and then I've been uh, pursuing my law practice uh, since then. So I, I worked uh, doing personal injury law at Park and Park for a few years, and then I went to Ashford and Riston I did commercial litigation for them, and now I'm the in-house counsel at Nanning, a construction company in Hawaii. And so, what do you do as in-house counsel for uh, Nan? <sighs> that that's everything. Um, it, it's a really great experience, but it it can be. Uh, you know, we some of our guys didn't have safety checks on their cars, um, so we get cited for that, and I'll, and I'll uh, respond to those things. But other times, it's coordinating with subcontractors for um, just the subcontract agreements. Um, we've, we've got some parcels of land, so that's land, some landlord tenant stuff. And, um, we're, we're developing a high rise tower, um, in downtown Honolulu. So, um, been very much involved in the development process and, and trying to figure out and things like that. So you name it for a business. Um, I, I try, I try to do it. Okay. Well, you know, I, I know this is the first time, uh, that you're running for office. And uh, so why don't you tell me and the viewers what exactly, why you're running for office? Of course. So I, I grew up in Mauna Loa um, and I, I have really deep ties to it. My mom really wanted me involved in the community. Any sport you can think of, I played. Um, and just, just growing up in the area, my mom, who is a currently state Senator Donna Mercado Kim, she would take me to a lot of community events so I would, uh, you know, be very involved in the community. I'd go to the Moana Love Valley picnic and I'd go to events with her and graduation. So I, I really have a, a, 
a deep feeling for the community and I really wanted to make it a better place. Um, so when I found out Aaron Johansson, like I said earlier, wasn't going to run anymore, I thought that, you know, I'm trying to get the younger generation involved and, you know, if I, if no one else is going to step up and do it, it, you know, I think I should do it. And I'm hoping to rely on my legal background, um, you know, to really understand some of the issues and, and bring, you know, deeper meaning and, um, a, a better sense of, um, laws to the government. And, and uh, you know, in your district that you're running in, uh, you have, you know, very, you have several condos, right? Yes, yes. And in fact, you, you told me when we were talking earlier that you own a condominium. Yeah, so a few years ago, I, I purchased a condominium in uh, downtown Honolulu on Kinao Street. Um, I, I just wanted to, you know, move out and finally invest in something for the future so i i bought a condominium and i i really like it um but there are definitely some you know concerns about it and it's it's just as expensive as owning a house so and there's some of the same issues about owning the house except definitely. you're dealing with, you're dealing with an association and 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 it's community living in 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 the strictest sense of the word because you have you know multiple families living in the same building and it it creates some challenges and you know there are benefits you know to uh living in that type of community but you know there are challenges so you know um and you know there are issues that you know we you know that uh condominium people uh i've been an, an advocate in this area for many many years and so we go to the legislature so you know, if, you know, what, what, I guess the question I want to put to you is, you know, how open would you be, uh, you know, to supporting our issues, you know, if you get elected? Yeah, I, I certainly think um, navigating a condo is hard and um, showing up when the board meets or is difficult and time consuming. So I, I'm definitely open to, you know, making it easier for condo owners to, uh, you know, see their building get improved or if, if they want to see improvements for those things to happen. So one of the things I saw that you sent me before this was on EV charging stations. That's uh, that's uh, something that, you know, I, I want to get an electric vehicle, but if you don't have the infrastructure to be able to charge it at home, like, you know, regular homeowners do, then it's difficult. It, it sets you back. Um, so, you know, making it more feasible for um, condo owners to maybe put a charging uh, infrastructure in their own stall or, you know, encouraging uh, the association to make some of those investments is something I'm definitely curious about and want to learn more and see how feasible that is. Okay. And, but you definitely will give us an ear, right? Who certainly, of course. Knocking on your door if you get elected. Certainly, of course. Right. So, and, uh, uh, I, sorry, sorry, Jane. I, I think a lot of things that I've been telling, or I think for lawyers in general, we're known a lot for fighting and, um, you, you know, the lit, lit, very, we're very litigious. And I, I think in my law career, um, I've been, my law career has been very much about negotiation and, um, you know, mediation and trying to mediate issues and, and learn as much so that we can find some middle ground and some common ground. Um, so I very much want to bring that, um, you know, that curiosity and that, um, and that way to solve problems that you know, both sides can mutually agree upon and feel good about it at the end of the day to the legislature. Okay, you know, um, you're running in this, you're a brand new uh, candidate. And so what do you see? I, I mean, you, you said you, you spent your whole life in Mauna Loa. And what do you see as, you know, some of the major issues that affect your district that you would like to address if you're elected? Yeah, so the first thing has to be um, clean drinking water. Uh, a lot of my district covers Red Hill and, and those fuel tanks. And so the Mauna Loa community and that whole community in general is want, you know, wants to make sure that we have clean drinking water and that the fuel is not leaking into you know, our, our, our water reservoirs. So I, I really wanna make sure that I'm working with our congressional delegation and and the Navy here to make sure that we're uh, defueling, you know, safely as possible, but also in a very time as quickly as possible. 
Um, that, that's been the top thing that's come up when I've gone door to door so far. People are, you know, want to make sure that, you know, water is not an issue and, and that's really a hot issue for them. Um, the, the next issue is, is crime. You know, a lot of people are concerned about crime. People have told me their catalytic converters have gotten stolen in front of their houses. And overall, they're just worried that the increased crime rate is, is affecting them. So I definitely want to encourage um, more neighborhood community um, organizations that help prevent crime and um, getting the community involved to make sure that safety is a priority. And then the last thing I think um, the stadium is is in my area. So figuring out a responsible way to develop that area, um, which a huge part of that is going to be condos or affordable housing opportunities for individuals, but making sure that, you know, the state is managing this project and in a really responsible manner. Well, you know, they, those seem like very lofty, uh, you know, goals, and that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so are you, you're going to It certainly is. Off? Yeah, I, so... Um, I, so I do have a, a, an opponent in the in the general election, um, and and he's been actually talking about a lot of um, trying to break down the barriers of of the two party system and trying to have you know he's trying to say that the the party system doesn't matter, um, but I very much think that you know having a good team um, in the legislature can really help get things done and really help tackle some of these big issues that kind of. Um, span multiple districts. So I, I've been um, already working pretty closely with Linda Ichiyama. She's a representative, another representative in the house that that kind of borders um, this area. And, and I have resources in my mom as a senator that also has um, you reach in this area. I'm also working with Glenn Wakai and Radiant Cordero in, in the city council to try to um, solve some of these big issues. So I realized that, it, you know, it's only my first year and um, these issues are huge. You know, they you know they affect the state at a state level. But when you assemble a team that all has the same priorities in mind, I think you can really accomplish a lot more than by yourself. And, and you know, recently David Ige, uh, uh, you know, he he he, I, I, he made a uh, a statement to the press, uh, or at least uh, there was a press release that said that he was going to change the plans for the stadium. So, uh, you know, what you what was supposed to be a private a uh, public-private partnership that would have resulted in the development of the condos and the and the entertainment district, so to speak. It sounds like he's breaking it up into two parts. And so, what is your response to? I mean, and the, the problem is, I guess he hasn't really come out with a with a definitive response. He just says, "I'm going to change it," or "I'm not going to," you know, do the do it that way. What's your response to that? Uh... Well, I, I think one that's really disappointing, you know, Governor Ige only has a few more uh, months in office and for him to make such a, um, you know, sweeping decision that affects planning that's been going on for years is, I, I, I think, just really disappointing. Um, I think we should have waited for the, you know, the next governor to really make some decisions on this issue. And um and I, I think when government, um, you know, changes their mind like this and gets involved, uh, kind of oversteps, um, it really increases the cost of, you know, the project as a whole, which ultimately gets passed on to the end level consumer. And that, and this probably means that those houses, th those affordable houses we're looking at are just going to be more expensive in the long run because we've, we've delayed the project and we've, uh, you know, added all these additional costs and time that, that only makes it more expensive in the long run. So. Um, I, I would hope that, you know, government tries to streamline a lot of these processes. Um, as I said earlier, my company is developing a high rise tower, uh, in downtown Honolulu and just the permitting process and working with the city to get an affordable housing agreement, you know, done has, has certainly been time consuming and we've had to push our timeline back for all these government regulatory steps that we have to step through. And it just, you know, adds on costs and time to the end user and. I think that's really unfortunate. So while I realize the government has these goals that they want to, you know, make sure that, you know, developers are building enough affordable housing, ultimately the cost is just getting passed on uh, because the government is uh, being slow or changing their mind or, or any of, of these number of steps that they want to impose on, on these developers. Well, you know, with the city recently, 
they made an announcement that they're that they were changing their processes at DPP. And I guess one of the issues was uh, people who submit their applications. It was taking too long for the, the city to review and return them. And I guess so now they're coming up with a proposal where people where where you know they're going to speed that up and they're going to instead of using I guess plan checkers they're going to allow architects uh to sign for the plans do you think that this is going to speed up the process I I think it sounds like the city you know recognizes that there's a problem and is trying to is trying to move it in a in a better direction and I think uh, being aware is the first step you know at least the it's on the city's awareness that uh there's a problem and you know we might need to address address that problem for too long i think we um you know it was just a commonplace that your permit was going to take two years to to even get looked at so i i think anything that we can do to allow you know working families to you know just make improvements on their homes you know so that the next generation can can also live in the same home is is important and you know, is only going to allow the state to be more prosperous and give the individuals even more options for living. Okay, you know, from you know, you you work for the construction company that actually does the building. How much time? I mean, is it is it is it uh, is it feasible to have the plan submitted by an architect instead of having the building department? I mean, the DPP people have these check plan checkers. I guess that's what they're called to see if everybody's in compliance. Because the, the the idea, at least the way I read it in the newspaper, is if you have an architect submitting the plans, the architect has got the architect has errors and omissions. So if he right. screws up and somehow allows these things to happen that are not re allowed by the ordinance, then people can sue the architect for under the errors and omissions right right yeah so i think all of our plans that and i could be wrong i'm i'm not involved in the i'm not an architect or uh you know not an engineer or anything like that but i i already think our plans get submitted as stamped with the architect that our architect or whatever that we use so um there, it's all so what i'm saying is it's already been reviewed by you know multiple eyes and multiple people with licenses and um you know and they're they're on the hook if there's any issues with that. So um, I, I certainly think streamlining the process and making it easier for these uh, builders to move forward is is the appropriate step because um, I, I you know I don't think we would ever move forward on a project if it wasn't um, designed properly and we had all the proper uh, code we met all the proper codes or architect. So yeah, that, that's my understanding of how the process works. And you know, for us, you know, in in condo land, I you know I hear so many complaints. I mean, because you know, we, you you have all these condominiums that are over 30, 40 years old, so they need repairs. And I'm talking not minor repairs, major repairs. You know, replacing their piping. I mean, that's a a major infrastructure replacement, and yes. or, or even you know uh, upgrading their fire alarm and. You know, we have something called life safety evaluation that the city, it's part of the city ordinance. And as of August of, of uh, what, last, it's October, uh, two, as of October, August of 2022, out of 275 buildings in Honolulu, only 20 got past these scores. That means you have 255 high rise buildings that didn't pass their LSE that need building permits to do the repairs that need to be done i mean and 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 we have three years to finish that and and i've been grumbling to our city council people hey we got to do something about the, there's no way in hell there, that you know we're going to be able to get all these buildings permitted and all the work done because i'm i'm being told it takes almost a year to get a permit to do repairs yeah you're not wrong and uh these costs only get added on to your maintenance fee or your special assessment that the condo association is going to charge. So really streamlining the process and making government more efficient is definitely one of the things I want to tackle if I'm to be elected this November. Okay. And, and, you know, talking about, you know, um, building plans, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, but you know, the people who operate the shopping center, Pearl River shopping center, the name of that group is Washington prime group. They happen to own the lots where, uh, Toys R Us, 
is located, which is right across the street from the seven condos over on Kolkaluk. And recently, because there's a bill pending in the in the uh, city council, you know, for TOD development, you know, that's transit oriented development. Mm -hmm. There was a bill that set the height limitation for that area, that that lot, as 60 feet. So Washington Prime Group went and they lobbied and they got it increased to 120 feet because they say they're going to build a for, uh, workforce housing in the parking lot. And so would you be you know, supportive of, of that project? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, so I definitely, one, think that we need more, just more options for affordable, for housing, for affordable housing and housing in general. So I, I'm definitely supportive of, of, you know, developers tackling some of these major issues. I, I don't think the burden lies solely with the government to solve these problems. We, we really need to make it, we need to be really working with private enterprise to, to make some of these things happen. I, I just want to make sure that um, they're doing it responsibly and, you know, it, it's a reasonable project because I know that area already has uh, congestion problems and, and traffic issues. So really making sure that, you know, the new development is, is going to fit in well and um, there's an overall plan to it. Um, but I don't I wouldn't have any other objection to to them doing that. I think that's that's a really prime area and people could really benefit from living there. Right. <clears throat> and, you know, what other. Uh... Uh, issues do you have? What other uh, per goals do you have if you get elected for your district? Well, so this isn't a, a district only goal, but um, for the last couple of years here, I, I've been doing a lot of procurement law. We, you know, we've been on a lot of government contracts and I, I can't even explain to you how many times I've, you know, read a particular statute in the procurement code and I don't understand it. And it's just not comprehensible. And it's it's making the process more complicated and as an attorney you know i i feel like i should be able to read it one time and and understand it and it'd be clear but it's anything but clear so i think one of my main goals is you know just trying to make the laws understandable and readable and clear so that uh, we're not running into confusion and the public doesn't feel like you know there's the capital of some ivory tower where it, it has all these high maka maka intellectuals or anything like that. I think the government needs to be um, clear and the laws need to be approachable so that people can feel engaged in part of the process. And, and that's my second priority, just getting more engagement in the process. Um, going door to door, half of the people are excited to see you and they want to talk to you and they have things to share. And the other half of the people, um, you know, are too busy or they're they're like, why are you at my door? You know this is my time I'm at home and and they're not really engaged in the process and, and getting more of these individuals involved, especially our young, you know, our young people who really need to take over and, and be the next leaders of, of Hawaii um, involved in the process and, and just have their input and have their say in, in where the state should be going for the next 50 to hundred years. Yeah, that's an interesting point because I totally agree with you uh, because even in, even in my organization, I keep asking, you know, you know, my, you know, my group leaders, I said, you know, you got to get some young folks up here because we're all getting old, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, we're going to be retiring or, you know, you know, we're not going to be around forever. And so, you know, you got to get us some young folks so that we can, you know, kind of turn over the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the reins to them so that they can take over. And so how are you, I mean, what is your feeling when you talk to, you know, your, you know, your generation about getting involved in, in government and in, um, in public, in public works? Yeah. So I, I think the first thing is, this is my mom's 40th year in elected office. And I just wanted to be able to, you know, learn from someone who's done it for such a long time and figure out the tools of the trade and what's worked and what hasn't worked. But what I've started to notice is that um, to get young younger people involved, I think um, moving to some of these alternate forms of communication, you know, having community um, committee hearings available by Zoom, um, you know, being on YouTube, some of those things can really help um, younger people get involved and get engaged, and you know, is more their speed. You know, if, if texting is a is a bigger medium for them, or 
or Instagram posts or something to at least get on their radar. Um, but at the same time, I recently went to a senior, a community senior event where they, where a lot of them said, you know, they couldn't even sign up for the events because it was all online. So um, trying to, trying to get multiple mediums um, so people can interact with the government and interact with me and, and get the word out is I think um, something that we need to be sensitive about and, but also um, trying to push uh, going into the future so that, you know, all generations can feel like they're part of the process. Well, you know, I think that's very, you know, uh, they're very, you know, good goals. I mean, to make, you know, to make everybody, to make it, it, the process inclusive rather than exclusive, because I think, you know, some people feel that there's a separation between them and elected officials. And I keep telling people, anybody who will listen, you want to be best friends with your elected officials. <laughs> I And I talk from years of experience, because when I pick up the phone and I say my name, I get you know, results. And I tell people, elected officials have people who just answer the phones to do constituent concerns. All you say is, my name is so-and-so, I'm a constituent, I live in your district. And then you tell them. And, you know, they will. They will, you know, they will do stuff for you. Things that, you know, you may not realize, but, you know, that's what they're there to to offer. You know, if not, what they'll do is they'll, they'll refer you to somebody who can help. And, you know, so that's why, you know, I'm doing this show because I have people calling me up and grumbling. I said, you know, what you got to do is you got to call your city council member or you got to call the mayor or you got to call your representative. And they they don't even know who these people are. And I said, you know, that's really disgusting. You know, you guys got to get in line. And, you know, so you can't come to somebody like me. You got to learn to pick up the phone and call your government. That's what they're there for. And that's why I encourage people to you know, meet their candidates, find out what they stand for, ask questions, and and actually and go out and vote for them, right? Yeah, I mean, of course. What you have to do, or you know, I, I or what I tell them is, you don't know, vote, don't grumble, right? And you hear a lot of people grumbling. Yes, did you <laughs> vote? Oh well, no, I was busy. Well, that's too bad then. You know, you 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 really can't you don't have any right to grumble if you're not going to vote. Well, you wouldn't even imagine how many people aren't registered um, compared to all the houses out there. We we have to skip a bunch of houses when I'm walking door to door sometimes when we're only going to register voters' houses because some people aren't even registered to vote. So that that's concerning too. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we've kind of run out of time. Thank you, Micah uh, Ayu, for being with us. I wish you good luck on your uh, campaign. And, and now we know that if you get elected, which we hope you will be, that you will be an ear to listen to our concerns. Thank you so much. And for you viewers out there, uh, like, I've, uh, like I've said over and over again, you want to be best friends with your elected officials. So now is the time to meet them when they're running for office and they're all over the place. So please, please, please reach out and meet your candidates, ask good questions, and then vote. Please vote. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon, and please uh, tune in next week, Thursday, for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, mahalo and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.